Hello everyone, welcome to chapter 4. We are getting into this thing called the mole like the animal. Well, not like the animal. It's pronounced like the animal. But anyways, we're getting into the mole and this thing called stoichiometry, which is a fancy way to say chemical conversions. And before we can do that, we need to do a little bit of review. So we're going to start right here with objective number 1, looking at the masses of different chemicals. Let me scroll down. And we remember from way back at the beginning of the year that all matter has mass. And that includes even very tiny pieces of matter like atoms. And we measure, at, or we measure matter rather with a few different things. First of all, we look at the mass. So how, what is the actual physical you know, weight or mass of this object? How much matter is there? We can also look at the volume. How much space does this matter take up in a three-dimensional thing? You know, how many liters, how many gallons of space does it take up? And third, we can also use density. Remember, uh, density d is found by looking at the mass over the volume. And this is a descriptor of how much space a given amount of mass takes up. And we're going to be using all three of these, but right now, for this particular section today, we're going to be focusing on the mass. So I've got a little excerpt here from a book by a guy named Bill Bryson talking about the size of the atom. And you can read this on your own time, but just to say, an atom is really, 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 really small. And we have to remember that all of the mass uh, of the atom is found in the nucleus. And this is the combination of protons and the neutrons. If we're being technical, electrons do have a mass, but it's so minuscule compared to protons and neutrons, we call them zero. So the mass of the atom is found in the nucleus, and it's the protons and the neutrons. So, for example, if I wanted to ask you the mass of an oxygen atom, an average oxygen atom, we would go to our periodic table and we would say, oh, oxygen, number nine, has an average atomic mass, if we round to a whole number, of 16. And this is a combination of isotopes, and you can go back and look at this from chapter 2, but the mass of an atom is just that. It's 16. In general, it's got 8 protons and 8 neutrons for most of the time for those isotopes. Mo the mass of molecules and compounds is easy, so let's start with an easy one. We've got H2O. You've all seen this. This is your common tap water. And if we're reading a chemical formula, remember the 2, or a subscript, applies to the atom directly to its left. So we've got two hydrogens and one oxygen. And what you do is you just take the mass of each of these. So hydrogen is one, and I've got two of them. And an oxygen, like we just looked at, was 16. So one times two is two, plus 16. That gives me a mass of 18 for my water. So a water molecule weighs 18 atomic mass units. Uh, if you do a larger chemical, like uh, let's do glucose C6H12O6, this is uh, turned into smaller chemicals which releases energy in your body. Same idea. So we've got carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. The mass of carbon is 12, the mass of hydrogen is 1, and the mass of oxygen is 16. We have 6 carbons, 12 hydrogens, and 6 oxygens. So what we need is a calculator to do this really quick. So on your calculator, if you do 12 times 6 Add that to 12 more for the hydrogen, and add that to 16 times 6. We get a mass of 180. So molecules and compounds are easy. Just add up your elements times the number of each of those elements. So some CTQs over on the right of your screen, so you can take a look at those, and we will see you in the next video.